In this part of the lecture, we're going to cover how to implement a bit vector in the C programming language. Let's start by including some header files that we'll be using. Standardio.h includes some input and output functions, and standardlib.h includes functions for allocating memory. Below the header files, we'll define three constants used throughout the bit vector implementation. Word size describes the number of bits in a word. Bits WS describes the number of bits required to represent the value of word size. And mask represents a bit mask with all the bits in bits WS set to 1. The first function we implement is the initBV function, short for initialize bit vector. This function takes two arguments, a pointer to a bit vector pointer and an integer describing the maximum value that will be stored. It returns 1 if the memory for the bit vector was successfully allocated. We'll begin by allocating memory with the calloc function. It's declared in the standard lib.h header, and it's similar to the malloc function, except that it fills the allocated memory with zeros. The first argument to calloc is the number of integers to allocate. Remember that each integer is a bucket. The second argument is the size of each bucket. Since bv is a pointer to a bit vector array, we have to dereference the variable bv to assign the correct address to the bit vector array. Finally, we'll return 1 if bv isn't null and 0 otherwise. Now we'll implement the set function, which is used to set a particular value in the bit vector. This function takes two arguments. The first is a bit vector array, and the second is the value to set in the bit vector array. This is the same function that we discussed in part one of the lecture, so it should look familiar. However, instead of using literals for the shift and bit mask operations, I've used the constants bits ws and mask. Recall that our word size is 32 and bits ws is 5. Now we'll implement the member function, which we use to test if an integer i is set in the bit vector. Like the set function, it takes a bit vector array as the first argument and an integer as the second. The function is the same as you've seen in part one, except we've used defined constants instead of literals. Notice that we don't modify the bucket for i. Instead, we mask the bucket with a bit set in the appropriate location. If the bit isn't set in the bucket, then the function returns zero Otherwise, it returns a non-zero value, which in C is considered as true. In the next lecture, we'll go over an example program that uses a bit vector. Until next time.